recess, closed session, no action taken, but I have to say to return the cats. So I'm going to have to keep these guys on time. So, what are our topics? Is it just Lanier? Just to um, Lanier and then Jerry's going to do a clearing and then Adam do a vacation. But Lanier's going to present it and then Ed is as well on the same topic. It's not going to be two Okay. About an hour. Joe, did you keep your paperwork from back there? No, I gave it back to him. JD? I, I left it. Okay, she wants That's to make sure thing. everybody left. Got five. I'll go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. Huh? I don't need anything. Debbie, what's up? Doing okay? Doing good. Okay. This was uh, just a comparison so we could kind of see. Ah. Uh, mouth. Water. But not in the water. Yeah, this was yeah, this was um, struggling for that just to see the comparison since we had the pinch. Oh, Freeman Park. Oh, oh Freeman Park. Okay, yeah, I, yeah, sorry. I was thinking about yourself. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, yeah. So this is just the um, How are you doing? comparisons. Yeah, we can see the effect that it's having on passes. So we went all along with the shed. Okay. Yeah. I, now I know. Now we're full. Yeah. 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 I'm retired. Thank you. It's not the same as the media. Yeah. Just more crowded. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll have to pick my round cell dial. All right. Yeah, good. Where is she? I want to see. Look at Rob. Young man, how are you? Good, sir. How about yourself? If I was any better, I'd eat donuts. And you are. I got a quorum. Ed, you ready? I make a motion to recess closed session to return at 10 o'clock all those in favor aye with recess with no action taken return at 10 o'clock all those in favor aye aye motion passes so with that 10 o'clock we got two briefings i'm going to keep you guys on time because we have to be back by 10 have to be back in closed session by 10. okay ed what do we got that's fast <laughs> that's an hour discipline timeline that's true Give me one second to bring up the PowerPoint for Lanier and we'll get started. talk about in, in the interim. So. Excellent. That sounds right good on. to me. So great. Mr. Mayor, members of council, uh, staff, thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, I'm Scott Diggs representing Linear Parking. Um, we are really appreciative of this time that we get to spend together with you this morning to talk about uh, what we've learned in the last eight months since we have uh, been back on the job and what we see today, what we would like to do. Uh, we've uh, got a really good presentation put together by our staff to go through of the things we've identified and seen. Uh, and what we want to do going forward and uh, really some action items for the next three years. So, uh, Mr. Mayor, I heard you about time. What is our time this morning? When do you want us to be done? In, in combination with the Clarendon multi-use, take 30. You 30. think you can do it in 30? We can do ours in 15 or 20, but we want to take all the time and questions. you guys want. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Uh, feel free to, what's that? 12 and a half. 12 and a half, we can do it. So, speed it up, Isaiah. <laughs> So anyway, uh, who I've got with me today, I've got Isaiah Mao. He's our vice president of municipality. He travels all over the country for us. He speaks and breathes municipal business uh, all over the place. Brian Scoggins is with us. He's been in the municipal parking business for 35 years. We're blessed to have him on our staff. Tina Reed, you guys have met before. She's our regional vice president. She works her little tail off running all over the place and does a great job managing our staff. Uh, Brian Sykes, you've met before. Uh, he started off uh, here in Carolina Beach helping us get the program off the ground. He's our regional territory manager. 
oversees all of New Hanover County for us. And then Stephen Zercher, uh, he's our location manager, and you guys have seen and met him before. So without further ado, I'm going to pass it over to our team, and we'll go ahead and get started. So thanks for the time. We really appreciate it. I think it's really important for uh, this is a big part of your budget. Uh, so it's really important, we think, to take the time to go through this. We're happy to do this as often as you guys uh, would like to do it. Yeah. So we I have one quick question, budget. Scott, without yes, cutting in your 12 and a half minutes or yep. more. We're talking about some of the replacement material uh, equipment. So was that not in our original RFP that went out to you guys that said when we put a budget together, we put a contract that we should have some plan? Because I know we had talked about some additional needs that you had discovered after you guys had been on the job. So did our original RFP not contemplate some of these things? I don't believe. I know it talked about it. But do you guys remember in the RFP if it specifically asked about that? My I guess the other question is, did our original contract, our, our recent contract that we entered into you, did it all discover, <laughs> did it discuss and have a plan for year one, year two, year three it, equipment? It did not have that. Right, so we have an existing contract that we just didn't catch the need for some of this equipment replacement. I think in fairness to right. everybody, I don't know that it was appropriate at that time because we didn't really know what the system was and the status of the existing equipment before we took over. Uh, now we do. So I think in fairness, it was good actually not to spend any money on equipment out of the gate. Let us get on the job. Let us figure out what we've got. Spend that time. Well, that was my recollection. We have up and running, and now we know that, and now we also know what's not functioning very well and what needs to be replaced. So, as part of our presentation, we've got a full three-year capex suggestion right. of what we think we should do to get us where we need to be from a technology and equipment perspective. So, that'll be part of our presentation. Thank okay. you. Okay. Good. Thank Thanks. you very much. Thanks, Scott. Scott said we just want to talk about now that we've been here for eight months just talk about how the season's been going and then our recommendations for the upcoming season so just some operational improvements we've seen so uh, one thing when we came in we, we promised in our proposal we could lower the convenience fee for the park mobile we, that was a success we lowered it down five cents we're still negotiating with them to lower it down we don't see in that money that goes directly to the customers to have a cheaper transaction fee when they use the park mobile um, we've seen it utilization, utilization utilization spike up it's up to about 30 percent now so 30 percent of payments are coming from the app we love that because they get the reminders they get the receipts they get all that uh, benefits that come with the mobile payment so that's been a success because we know we transitioned to park mobile last year and was kind of low when we first came in and we've worked with them to do sponsorships advertisements we've handed out brochures cards we lowered the fee, so now we're seeing more and more people use it, which has been a big thing for us. Okay, you want to talk about meters? So meters, when we first came in, it was a lot of uh, problems with the meters. Um, we estimated about 50% of them were, were damaged or malfunctioning or having problems. We've got that up to about 90% now. That doesn't mean 10% of the meters out there are not accepting money. It just means 10% of them are having whether it's the batteries are having to be changed daily, the solar panels not working, certain features of them are having problems regularly. But we, I think right now, uh, the team has worked really, really hard. That's probably been our number one success story is just the team working around the clock, getting all these meters that are five, six, seven years old, just getting them um, repaired and getting them out on the streets operational. We've updated a lot of signage throughout the town. Um, that, that's helped let people know. I think people want to park in a, in the town lot, they feel more comfortable, there's more trust. And we've seen meter revenues increase by 18% compared to last year. So that's been um, great. We, we promised we came in here, we thought we could improve revenues, and we're seeing it across the board with uh, meter revenues, mobile payment revenues, citation revenue. Uh, we've also implemented the license plate recognition technology, which has helped um, enforcement and cut back on staffing. Why do you think the revenue is up 18%? Is it because we raised the rate? I think the number one reason is the meters working at all times. Yeah, because the equipment <coughs> into an operational stance and then promoting even in the beginning when meters were not working, if when someone would call and be like, there is an alternative payment instead of part So of when you say it's up 18%, is it just a flat line? It's up, the revenue is up 18% from <coughs> last year or it's up 18% above what you expected it to be? It's 18% above last year. So part of that is attributed to the fact that we raised the rate. And the weather. expanded the hours too, yeah. and expanded the hours. But yeah. clearly, some of the equipment's working better. Thank you. Yep. Good. And there's actually since you brought that up, I brought comparison with uh, 
for near totals versus base total. Last year, so you can see the meters, pay stations up across, violations up across, and so um, total increase of about $150,000 compared to last year. Are those numbers as of recent? In other words, you still expect an increase to that 969? That's through the end of July. And the 814 was the prior uh, operator through the end of July or the end? Okay. Interesting. We looked at the, the method of payment, and I was shocked that credit card and part mobile is so high. So at the pay stations, you're seeing about 86% being from credit card or the app, so 14% cash. At the meter, you're seeing 28% cash, just that's all from coin, and then still 55% in credit card and 17% in part mobile. So uh, we're starting to see change and shifts. So we think about that when we're putting together our recommendations for the future year to see more and more uh, credit card. This is just some stats we put together. Again, we don't have to go through all this. We put this in your handout, just some more data for you all to look at. It looks like the town does a good job buying the early bird. Well, the early bird special, we, uh, we extended an extra two weeks this past year versus the year before. So. Customer service. We've seen a lot of compliments, getting the permit sales. We've seen revenue go up, and we've gotten all the the meters um, operational for the for the agent. Yard. So, some of our goals for the upcoming season: we want to improve the signage and wayfinding. Again, people want to park in a town lot. We just need to make it more obvious which ones are town lot through signage and wayfinding. We want to improve the golf cart management and experience. We have some suggestions here. We're going to share with you, and then we want to improve the Freeman Park management and the technologies that we're using there, along with our meter recommendations. So again, we don't have to go through all these. These are included in our proposal. I just wanted to show you some of the sign options that we had out there. We are mindful of the sign litter, but we have a lot of the examples to, to go by. And some of these we're starting to put out there with Wind masters and, and our recommendations. We this is the you want to talk about that? Just the total. Yeah, so we went through the lots and determined what do we need like an entrance sign. Tina, can you speak into the microphone so they can get it um, at home? Um, so we went through the lots to determine what do we need to make all the lots cohesive so that all the signage is the same, people understand what the rates are, they understand what the rules are. So we did what we needed as far as an entrance sign, a sign next to the pay station, and then some of the lots are, are large enough to where you need signage throughout the lot just so that they can, you know, where you need to go and what you need to do. 
So we just did an estimate of, we updated that signage that you saw earlier was at the Hamlet West lot. And so based on those costs that we did for that particular lot, it's the pricing that we used here and went through. So that's the estimate that we did for the, what it would take to do kind of island-wide to update that signage um, in regards to that, but no coal and insulation cost. So that you have an idea of what you'd be looking at. Those 82 signs, is that on top of what we originally estimated we went to contract with one another? No. So that's in conjunction with what we already lined out okay all right so some of the golf cart parking improvements so we want to talk about redesigning some of the spaces we do this in a couple of our operations in the Carolinas including North Myrtle Beach we have some pictures here we want to show you uh, we want to look at some of the lots and see if we can add spaces I know recently we walked around with the town and every lot see where we could add additional spaces uh, we want to consider charging stations as well. I'd ask you a question on the golf carts. Um, without setting up a specific golf cart space where it's lined differently and it's smaller, are you experiencing where other municipalities are allowing two golf carts to share one traditional space? Yep. So and are we working? Thank, thank you. you. So is that going to preclude a, a standard passenger vehicle from parking there? Because we're going to start hearing people saying, how come that car is parked in the golf cart spaces? If you right. put a line down the middle. No, they do this for every single space. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. In Nor in the rule in North Myrtle Beach is that it is designed for a vehicle, but it also for the golf cart. So it's a first come, first serve. If a golf cart gets there first, and then you can do double parking with golf carts. If a vehicle gets there first, it's vehicle parking. Um, it's just kind of the rule of thumb within that town. Now, Myrtle Beach is a little bit different. They don't do tandem parking. They do regular parking, and if a, two golf carts can get in one space, then it's fine. It still makes sense in the winter when people aren't driving golf carts. Yeah, exactly. So Are these metered spaces or non-metered spaces? Um, yeah, both. So would exactly. you have to have two meters if, if you make it golf cart parking? Um, all golf carts, I have a pass. Yeah, yeah. I, I understand the passes. I'm saying if somebody wanted to pay the meter and, and that, that was a metered spot for a vehicle, I'm going to say they didn't have. If they didn't and it required payment, then instead of doing a, so to speak, instead of doing more equipment, is I would advertise that it would need to be park mobile, that we could dedicate those areas to park mobile, and then that way you're not costing out that expense of equipment. I think that would be feasible. Yeah, because knowing, only... knowing that our park mobile percentages are keep rising, I think that that would be the ideal. The only instance where you'd need that is a Curie Beach golf cart coming up because they wouldn't have a pass. Right, and that's what I was thinking about. If they didn't so buy a parking pass, all the they Carolina to pay Beach for the has meter. to have the parking, the parking pass, pass yeah. sticker. Anybody side. coming from within that side. Right. Same with Reynolds as well. Hmm. Reynolds right, Reynolds as well, you're right. Well, the Reynolds. Well, the Reynolds. Well, the Reynolds. Well, that's, well, that's, that's, well, that's, that's why I'm asking well, would we need a double meter on those spots, which is more equipment? Yeah, I don't know. That's true. I'm just throwing that at you because I don't know. And, and I have heard there's people bringing in their golf carts on trailers when they come for the week in Carolina Beach, so they wouldn't probably have a parking pass either. Right, they wouldn't. You know. So anyway, just throwing that at you. Yeah. And, the, and the lots that have the pay stations, it won't be it, but the ones that have the single meters, yes, if we're going to do that, we'd have to figure out a solution okay. whether it's park mobile. Yeah. But we recommend this. Uh, I was the first time I saw it was North Myrtle Beach, which we took over July 1st, and it works really well for are our parking spaces wide enough for two golf carts? Yep. So, I, yes, yes. So um, we we have looked at that, and uh, at my part of the presentation, I'll talk about what Tina, Stephen, myself, Sheila, and Mark sat down and looked at last week, which how can we add additional spaces in Carolina Beach? So I'll walk quickly through what we've looked at. And we are interested in the tandem spaces, or staff was, if council is interested in going that route. Our normal parking space that we um, stripe is a 9 by 18. We would go to a 10 by 18 okay. to accommodate this I size. didn't think it was wide enough. <laughs> yeah, repaint the whole town.
Uh, we did a meter and enforced survey. We have some premium part recommendations. We have some custom service recommendations, and then some recommendations for equipment. So again, we have no recommendations here. We just we did uh, we survey. We actually run all five of these accounts, and we just put together the rates and enforced an hour in Carolina Beach. We feel is in line with uh, with the neighboring cities there. We put together some list of premium part recommendations. Uh, this is you want to touch a little bit on the yeah. problems we've had. So right now you have your premium part pass is a design with just a four a four digit number. A um, little difficult to track. You know, no true way to really track it digitally, so to speak. So, and we are seeing some passes that people have decided to try to photocopy and try to put on their windshield and, and do that kind of thing. So, you know, our suggestion would be that. We need to look at some better ways to be able to provide, you know, um, permit passing, and we can do that either with a barcode or with a QR code, and then some systems where that can scan that that barcode or that QR code, um, and to make that um, sticker, so to speak, holographic, so that no one can photocopy it. Basically. So, when would you see scanning a QR or a barcode? Because we don't do it. The whole idea of having the pass is we have a through lane and a daily lane. Mm -hmm. So when would it would it be just randomly as you drive down and around? Yeah, for do for doing spot audits for when you're coming through on non busy days, you can do that to try to track as much as possible. And as far as issuing as well, being able to scan right now when we to be able to track a pass when it is if when someone goes online and they purchase or they go to Island Tackle, you we are not a, we cannot enter that permit number that's issued to them into the Park Mobile system. We have to do a manual spreadsheet so to speak to keep track of all of those numbers um, so it's a little tedious in that so this would help you know be able to track if someone says you know I've lost my pass or, or anything of that nature we can simply go in and track it a little bit better but as far as scanning that you know don't want to back up the line don't want to do that but at the same time on busy days the method that we're talking about scanning we can have two scanners and it does not take that much these stickers would actually be on the outside of the window so it's much easier so that you scan, scan, scan. Because it would be nice to get that information to see how many and times And to be able to do counts and those comes kinds of comes things. Yeah, times. exactly. So Tina, almost like uh, when you drive through the toll list booths exactly. now, if you have it overhead, you it have gets it overhead your license plate. And it gets plate. you, you know, definitely Not those kinds of things. So you can do it automatically without right. a person. Exactly. Is that possible? You can. That's what we're talking about. You can, but I would not recommend not having a person there. Uh, yeah. Yeah, well, you can have both. Yes. That exactly. way you wouldn't miss it. You won't. And I think what Councilman Shuttleworth was getting at is that that um, information for us to know who is actually on the beach and at what frequency would be um, a lot of good information for us to have. Yeah, Count. I'd like to know how many local. times it passed. I mean, so if we're getting repeat people from right. Greensville, Greenville, or, or if they're the coming from Fayetteville six times, or if it's our residents that are out there Exactly. It gives you a lot of data. Then it would that help our marketing that and that right. kind of thing. Right. It gives you a lot that you can then make further recommendations right. or further you know, accommodations. For and if we, if we have the automatic system of scanning, it would help because we have a lot of people using Freeman Park that are very wary of when you have people out there and they come when you don't. further it can tie into the pay, pay machine so if for some reason we're out there someone comes before when it reads the plate it compares it to the list of permit holders it compares it to the list of people that paid if they didn't pay it, it puts them on the flag list we can pass it to the police to say these four people are somewhere on the on the beach on right. park and didn't pay so that is a solution that helps um, but again with the customer service piece and when it's busy we realize we have to it's good to have staff there, but we can tie in all three of these solutions, staff, the, the QR code, as long as we get the plate into something like this. Is that tied into this $15,000 cost as well as the gate access for $12,000? Which, which slide is that one? Uh, it's on in the segment the last page there. It says providing the LPR, then you have the cost for $15,000, and the estimated cost related to access gates for are $12,000. Is that what we're applying to here? In this presentation? Yeah. They have the market. proposal that you gave. Oh, sure. I'm curious if that's the cost of what you're talking about in regards to the LPR fixed for the Freeman Park. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 
So that, that would be how much it would cost. So my question is roughly, what's the life expectancy up there where our beach is because of the erosion from the salt air? Uh, I'd say, honestly, five to seven years is what generally what we're seeing okay. uh, in this type of climates. I think that, I think that cost, $15,000, would be the whole system. Um, the thing that we did not account for is getting, I don't think we need power. We think we may be able to do solar, but getting data to that area. Uh, yeah. There's some little things we were looking at yeah, that the cost may be a little more. process of getting I believe we're in the process of getting a new website vendor right um, and it so could be can we integrate yeah. integrate we can help a little better our parking absolutely rather than spending another five thousand dollars on a dedicated uh, website that can could we be not included have to the mobile app it could be, yeah right. it could be embedded in that with no problem we can add that I'm sure GG could do that So which is which in all the pictures? Okay. I was so about top, to say this. Top, top oh, right yep. is a McKay. Top <coughs> left are Duncans. And then the bottom to the right is the loop. And the left one is a loop to Cosmo, they call it. That's kind of the name of it. Um, That's the one that's solar? Uh, yeah, they're, they're pretty much all solar. Okay. For the Duncans are not solar. We right. call those the Duncan not McKay. the smart meters. <laughs> and those are the ones that take coins. Those are the ones that do they? They don't take credit cards, uh, just coins. Okay, so they can take a credit yeah. card, or you can go to the app. Okay. Yeah. Everything takes a credit card. Just a bit more vintage. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. The McKay's we consider the, the McKay meters workhorses. They they work. They do well. The issues that we've had with them this year has been battery related. They take a lithium battery that unfortunately comes from Canada, and that's the only source for them. And so they get stopped at the border every time, and we have to wait a couple weeks to get them. So we, we've tried to keep inventory, but that's one of the biggest struggles with the McKay. Stay with the budget. Stay with it, yeah, yeah um, it, it, with that. Okay. Um, the T2s are having issues. They always have end of life issues where they're going to have an end of life where the modem has to be replaced or the motherboard has to re be replaced. That's kind of where we're running into some of with those issues right now. We had a couple of those machines that when we first started were absolutely non-operational. They weren't functioning. We've had to replace the motherboards. We've had to replace a couple other pieces and just, you know, 
try everything we could to get them working. They are functioning at this point, um, but we believe that they are at the end of their life. So we are recommending to go with them to to go with a Parkion machine. And you can go. Um, Parkion is a unit that we utilize in many locations. We installed 40 of those machines in North Myrtle Beach. They met our deadline. We've installed them. We've had not one issue this entire season. We installed all 17 in Folly Beach. We have those in Wrightsville Beach. We actually started in Wrightsville Beach with them first. We've had Wrightsville Beach, I think, now for three or four years. And again, they are they are very, very reliable. We've had very minimal issues with them. And going to this system allows for us to change how we're doing parking. Is you, it would, we would change those areas to pay by plate. So then we can then utilize the LPR better and with our enforcement that we're enforcing by license plate, more so than someone having to get a receipt, walk all the way back to their car, that kind of thing. They just simply put in their license plate, they're paid, and they can go on. Question for you. Okay. Uh, like Steve Shuttleworth, we're both pretty much last page guys. <laughs> so we look at these last pages where it shows the cost. Mm -hmm. Were all these included when we signed the contract that this is something that was already pre-budgeted for, or are these out-of-pocket expenses to Carolina Beach? Out, this was not included in the original. So that was my first question. We didn't. We never asked them when we first did our proposal. So yeah. these are all new. So, but go ahead, Judan, because I had the follow-up question on that. Yeah. So in the first year, we're looking at roughly a hundred grand out of pocket to replace some of these. Yes. Second year, looking at ninety, and that third year, another sixty-seven. Mm -hmm. So, come out our revenues. How much do you think we're up out of our revenues? And do Ed, can you refresh our memory on what our original estimated budget for revenue was? Which was my next question. <laughs> the last page guy. I'm right, yeah. that. <laughs> I know. Are we going to be ahead or behind the curve if we approve $100,000 in new pay stations? Is that excess revenue that we can spend, or are we going to dip into? I can get that for you. I don't have it in front of me. I just have the Freeman Park in front of me. Yeah. Unless you have it, Debbie. I don't know if you have it. Uh, no, we had just pulled Freeman Park information. Uh, and I guess the other question would be would does that increase our efficiency and we would collect more funds having the better meters i, I don't yeah. know I, certainly I would we pay would it pay for itself my, would yeah, be the my question my professional opinion is yes yeah. well, it also reduces labor costs to a point because we are able to better enforce so you're going to see better enforcement because of the pay by play right um so it, it that should increase it. everything yeah exactly. i think what steve's kind of getting to is that 18 percent that we're up this year is it cover what that cost there mm -hmm. is so you guys said we're up 18% this year. Mm -hmm. Is it 100 grand? Yeah. yeah. So then. But looks like. Right. Yeah. Just, I mean, just, at, uh, yeah, the increase that we've done so far so pays for your first year pretty much. Got it. Okay. Council, wrap up questions and comments to stay in the timeline. Yeah, I'm cool I'm with good. that. You're good. Okay. Good. Hey, two quick comments and a question. Like the pay station idea, the uh, going up and scanning to keep it moving, and then the. Well, I just looked at you, Scott, when I said it. But the almost boothless toll option for the express lane, when November rolls around and the parking's free, probably want to ops check, operations check those meters before we reinstitute paid parking at those sites. Come April. And Come April. the Park Mobile app, I noticed it was 5%. It was the lowest percent. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, to use the app, strategies to promote that maybe when you know, he'd be parking passes picked up, but but how do we get that word out? Because that's a real easy way to do it. So I love the concept. Tina, could you talk about that a little bit more? And then the um, was it Click and Park from the? No, no, that's what was the Wilmington using two potentially using two apps? What we are seeing, and, and we did not pull it for this, but we will for our next meeting. Is we are able to pull demographics from Park Mobile. We're able to pull zip codes because they have to put that into their account. So we're able to see where they're coming from. So a lot of towns are considering, should we put in two apps? Should we look at our top 10 visit, where our top 10 cities are visitors are coming from? What app is prevalent in their area? And then do we, then do we provide two Thanks. apps? You know, that kind of thing. You're maximizing your, yeah. It, so yeah. we're having a marketing and advertising mm -hmm. com, uh, committee meeting today. Okay. So if possible today, if not certainly in the future, it would be good um, information to be able to, to convey that. to the CVB 
if, if we're getting 54% of our people are playing, paying with a credit card and you can track a zip code of 54%, mm -hmm. that's a pretty strong. Yeah, uh, yeah we, did, we did that. We, we provided those Mark same demographics to Myrtle Beach last year and to their hospitality division, and they were able then to say, hey, let's go put our funds where we're right. seeing people come through. And right. then it also allows for us, we are working with Park Mobile in Myrtle Beach to do a marketing effort to send out through Park Mobile, through their through their uh, text <coughs> messages and through their Twitter feeds. Um, they've got a new system too that when someone has used Park Mobile before mm -hmm. and they get into an area where it is, they will send them a Twitter feed or say or a text and say, "Don't forget you have Park Mobile option in this area." So how hard is it for you to to um, extrapolate out that Jim, I have one last quick information? Because we get a hit, not a Can you can you help me get that by this okay. I'd like to at least get that back to CVB. So because we're getting ready to start talking okay. budget and strategy yeah. of where to deploy dollars. Tina and Scott, good. Just one last thing. Uh, it's great having all this information going to the end of the season. So we look into that cost, the replacement, everything. Please put this on your calendar for April to come to our workshop because our season kicks off at the beginning of May, that we need to make sure we have everything functional and in line and play for this. So if you can, March or April, be at that workshop to make sure we're 100% compliant, everything's functional, that we're ready to rock and roll right out the gates. Okay, no problem. And to answer your point, we'd like to do this same rodeo again in November or December and take some time. I mean, this is a huge part of your town yeah. operation and your budget, so yeah. I'd like to have an hour at least, maybe yeah. an hour. <laughs> at January rather than November and December because as the holidays get in, you know, and plus the election, that's going to impact who's going to be sitting up here. So, okay. so January, January everybody will start over. That'll be good. The sooner the better for us because if you do implement that thing, recap. you want us to do, we want to have plenty of time to implement before we open. We got to right. 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 But to get bang for your buck, January is probably better now. Okay. So got it roll. Thank you guys very much. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Um, Thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. Um, Jody, and just a comment. Um, I think it might be a good idea if, when you have your Freeman Park committee meetings, or you ask um, one of these guys to attend, since they they're a do. big part of it. They typically show That'd be awesome. Yeah. yeah. And Kim, could you email us a copy of this presentation? Thanks. Yeah. We'll have RFIs after. Okay. We got uh, 20 minutes to go through Clarendon and then non-agenda before I bring us back from recess. And actually, I have a. a if you want, I'll go through. I have a few parking um, additions that I can talk about now, if, if that's okay. <laughs> or we can do it at non-agenda, either way. Well, you're going to do it anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, your choice. Mox Knicks. I didn't see that on the... Ed, I have a quick question for you, because you said you are going to take the parking spaces from 9 feet to 10 feet. We have roughly 750 parking spots in town, so how many would we lose by widening that one foot through every single one? So what we've done is gone through and looked at all of our parking lots and on-street parking and identified some areas where we can add the tandem spaces. Uh, we haven't gone through the specifics and said we wouldn't go in and add, create a lot that is completely tandem. We would just go into a lot and that um, we think some tandem spaces work and create a couple, um, you know, two, five, ten. So um, we will put that together and give you the, some specifics. But we do have some recommendations on that. Um, I have several things in here, but right now I'm just going to talk about parking because uh, we have a few other items to go on um, to talk about today. So. That I'm going to start with ways we can expand town parking, which is marries into what Lanier is talking about. Um, equipment replacement for parking, we'll talk about that a little bit more to wrap up the discussion you just had. And, uh, and then I'll get into the other topics uh, under your non-agenda. So I'll just go through that now. 
Um, I've got several sides that look a lot like this. Just give, just gives you an idea of what's out there and what we 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 have looked at for the different lots. We're starting on the south end of town in Alabama. On the west side, we have 45 parking spaces now, and there is some opportunity to add a few tandem spaces there. Um, Alabama East, we, uh, there's a safety issue we identified with the crosswalk. It needs some additional striping and potential tandem spaces. Ocean only has a couple or 17 spaces. We thought tandem would work well there as well. Again, we're only talking about a couple um, to accommodate some golf carts in these areas. Uh, Tennessee has some vegetation that's impacting our signage and um, there might be some golf cart spaces we can add on the south side of the street or of the parking lot. Uh, on the west side of Lake Drive, on the, um, beside Veggie Wagon, there's a spot where we can add some on-street golf cart spaces. Uh, you go down to Carolina Beach Lake and we do have, I think everybody saw the master plan that Eric's working on and that's going to create some additional parking in that lot. The Shell lot has 38. There is a significant um, space because that's just a strange, uh, unusual shaped lot. Yeah. So it creates a lot of opportunity and that some of those dead spaces where we could put golf carts. Right. Uh, Hamlet Lot West is the one that we lease and there are a few opportunities in there we've um, and we can also work with the owner on possibly expanding some of the golf cart spaces. Um, Hamlet Lot West we are reconfiguring with the Ocean Rescue Building which I'll talk about at the next item. Uh, Mac Lot is 75 it could easily do and I think we've talked about 90 although that one might go away and we're trying to get an update on um, construction from the private property owner. On um, the Palms lot going down to our core downtown, there's on um, Myrtle, Myrtle Road is right behind McDonald's. A lot of folks are, we tried to identify areas where people are parking golf carts and they are parking in the, the side of the road on Myrtle. So we could add some spaces there. Um, the town hall lot, there's a few spaces tandem for the marina and fisherman's lot we could add a few and the weeks lot um, there's a lot of areas where we could add some golf cart parking and dead spaces uh, harbor masters will be redesigning uh, with uh, the closing on that property that we're looking at for 310 canal drive so we will be increasing parking there uh, and potentially some space for tandem tandem spaces or golf cart spaces. And we did see some areas on Sandpiper where we can restripe next to the shower building and get and bathrooms and get some space there. Uh, canal lots is um, there are 31 there and there's some more space there, dead space where we could add golf cart parking. Uh, North Pier lot, uh, there's not a lot of room on that lot, but we thought we could add one handicap space in that lot. Um, this is a aerial that the mayor and I saw yesterday. So we basically covered all of town, but we didn't we didn't look at much at this with Lanier. Um, something I didn't know is when Army Corps is looking Who put at this map together. Ed, did you say the Marriott? The Army Corps of Engineers. Oh, I thought you said the mayor. He said the mayor and I. Mayor and the mayor. I couldn't hear Sorry. That. The mayor and I met with the Army Corps yesterday and looked at this. So you see a few of these areas where all, all in these areas it says how many parking spaces are within these, um, the circle shown on the map. The Army Corps looks at this and may, you have to have a certain minimum of at least 10 in these areas, parking spaces, for uh, funding of coastal storm damage reduction projects. So they are looking at this and there's some, some areas where we do not have the minimum. So we yeah. have to add parking in some of those areas. So we're going to have to, and we actually do have a plan to add some parking on some of these street ends. Uh, we know there's some, some area on Delaware 
and most of these street ends we can add one or two so we're gonna have to go back and add those so when you talked to him yesterday Ed, was it strictly for vehicular parking or do we not make the case that golf carts and bicycles also provide the public access to the beach and if we're providing those spaces as well that we should get some credit for it because it's not uh, it's not just residents that ride bicycles and golf carts to those beach accesses. So do we get any kind of acknowledgement if we go, for example, on Clamshell Lane and we had seven spaces if we made it 11 because we converted some to golf cart? I think we can meet the vehicle, but that's a good question. We can ask them that. We, got, we were meeting with them again this afternoon, so we can ask them if that helps our case, if we add or, or can show and I, they didn't inv they only inventory the vehicle so we can make that case so is that for the brer yes sir yes sir <clears throat> oh let me get back hey ed take your time on this i didn't see the manager's update on the agenda so i didn't know you had something to give us so what we'll do is what we don't get done before 10 we'll roll back in here right pick it up as an item of business i don't have to add you know we'll modify the agenda accordingly and so that we're, we're not escalating through. Okay. But I, I just didn't see it here. It wasn't on my package. Right. It's, it's not on there. I was planning on tag teaming on with the linear piece for this. And then I can stop and go to Jerry for the, I'll add it on the updates that council mentioned um, in an email. So I can go through those as well. This is on, on your screen now is the canal lot that um, we do have a, a uh, nice building there that we used to use for lifeguards and we use as a police substation. It has not been used in several years. We did go in and renovate a few years ago when we were looking at a beach ranger. So this is a potential area where we could um, look at for our, our parking folks, housing them. We would need to go in and uh, bring them with us and assess this spot. I think it would be good if uh, there's two offices upstairs uh, and bathrooms and then there's some garage space downstairs so it would be fairly ideal for for their setup uh, one thing that we do now with freeman park passes is if you buy them online then we um, certified mail them to you so it costs some money and there's some uh it, it is there's some uh folks that it goes in the mail and then they go on vacation and then they get here and they miss their pass so there's um, and it, there's we, we'd like to improve that process so our thought is maybe expanding our hours in an office like this you're going right by this when you're going on Freeman Park and they could stop there and get their pass and walk, and go on they've already got it prepaid this would require us to mark out a uh, certain number of spaces, probably around six spaces for their parking and some 15 minute parking spaces for folks that are coming to pay a ticket or to um, buy a pass. Some staff recommendations um, moving forward with making improvements to all parking lots. So we we can do this in several ways. Uh, I can work with Brian. Uh, we have uh, some vendors that um, can do the the modifications to our lots to add some of the parking. Um, we can also work with Lanier. They also do this type of work and know what we're looking for, so we can work with them on, on restriping some of these areas. Uh, I'd like to utilize existing maintenance and operation if possible, and if we need additional money, um, what we'll do for the proposal that you saw for, for them today for the um, additional uh, equipment we'll put that on your September agenda and um, have a final number on there for you I think their number was right under a hundred thousand but there was some um, installation costs and then if we need to add any of this in there we would so we'll work with them and finalizing the the right number to get for you um, at your summer to September meeting um, we also we're not enforcing golf cart parking right now and we are looking at putting some of this in place. Uh, our thought would be going back and enforce, start enforcement back in October. That's up to council to consider. Um, the next item is consider a, right now we start in April. We could start in March.
for enforcement in our parking program. This was similar to Wrightsville Beach. They actually start in March. We do have a lot of good weather, and I went down there a couple times this year, and they were they were slammed. You couldn't find parking spaces in March. So that's a possibility if you wanted to consider that for um, our parking program. Uh, and then the last recommendation is we do complete an assessment, work with Lanier of that canal lot office for parking management. Ed, did you find out when the lease is up on the current location? It is January for across the street, I believe it is. Yes. January. And would you, do you would this be um, available for them in January? The new location? Yes, we, we would, uh, we did go in and renovate the offices. There is a, some additional work we'd have to do for, to, for the bathrooms. There was some water damage, and I don't know the extent of that. I've talked to Mark. We're going to go check it out um, probably today or tomorrow. We'll go in there. And, and how, much, how much are we paying at the current location? It is 13, 13? 1300 a month, $1,350 a month. Uh, th this slide is a repeat of what you've already seen from Lanier, so I won't focus on that. Uh, and then, I can, Mayor, I can stop here and come back to, um, that's, that's basically all I had for parking. Um, I can I do have some updates after this or I can keep rolling how long is that clearing again take how much do you need Jerry <laughs> let's let's hold this okay do this and we'll do non agenda post uh, closed session and then Jerry can roll us out I got an ordinance or a uh, ordinance assignment yeah thank you Jerry Kim just so I don't forget can we get a copy of Ed's presentation too I want to kind of go over a little more if we could get them before the meeting, that'd be awesome. I didn't hear the question. I'm sorry. Neither. Because it was in, it's been in pretty bad shape for the last number of years, and we didn't put the money into fixing it up. The last time the ocean rescue guys were in there, it was it was pretty damaged. So I it, that's why we're looking at doing it. Yeah, I'm not sure it's how renovated it got, but that is the reason we're going back to look at it. We should be using it. That's right. Yeah, I, I, would think so. I yep. agree. I agree 100 percent, and I appreciate you bringing that up, Ed. Sir? Especially if you're going to utilize reinforcement of other staff members. Right. Right. I mean, that's exactly why it's on the agenda. All right. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right, Jerry, go ahead. Okay. Uh, quick update on Clarendon. Uh, the project's going well. Overall, we've got. Um, Amazingly, bid and construction plans approved by DOT. We sent those in last week when we had about a day and a half turnaround of <coughs> approved plans. Versus, you guys remember Greenway project? It took two years, but we started yeah. from scratch. So we had bid ready plans from 2014, and so we were, you know, at third base starting out. So contract document I'm working on with the uh, MPO staff. Uh, the state stormwater permit from 2014 is still valid, so that put us a step ahead. We're working on the uh, soil erosion land disturbance permit, and that's ready to submit today, hopefully. <laughs> Debbie and I have been working on that. Um, and we started the DOT encroachment agreement, and that's been submitted. Um, still lacking, we, we're in process on the uh, programmatic categorical exclusion. That's the environmental review, um, which is, shouldn't be a, a big deal at all. There's not a whole lot out there. Uh, next steps would be completion of all those documents, and that clears the way to request construction funds authorization, which we've got to have before we can go to bid. And at this point, the way we're tracking, it's looking pretty good. We may be able to go to bid in, in November. Um, we have set the public information meeting for Thursday, September 19th from 5.30 to 7. And then, of course, if folks, you know, showing up a little bit later, that, that's fine. Um, but the consultants will be here, steward engineering will be here, and we'll have a lot of displays and pictures and plenty of folks to answer questions. So um, September 19th, 5.30 to 7 or so. Action requested today is adopt budget ordinance 19-11-20 so we can start uh, paying some bills. Questions to Jerry? Not at this moment. Okay. I got a motion. 
Is that what needed now? Can you do one, Joe? Joe? Yeah. I'd make a motion to adopt the budget ordinance number 19-1120. Oh, we'll do that for that. Yep. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Thanks, Jerry. Thank you. All right. You continue with. Why don't you pick right? up where you are, and then okay, we'll roll back for uh, whatever you got left and non-agenda. So moving forward with the Freeman Park, the, uh, these are the categories bulleted out that we've asked the Freeman Park Committee to look at. I put the schedule down at the bottom. September would be the Freeman Park Committee meeting. October, we would have a workshop to review those and discuss uh, issues, look at any ordinance changes we need to make, and talk about specifics with passes, um, all those different uh, bullets on your screen. And then at your November meeting, we would we would adopt any changes and put those, that in motion. Uh, I did talk to Lieutenant McCullough, or I sent him an email yesterday, and uh, basically laid out the, that this is a timeline we have to meet. So I asked him to reach out to Freeman Park Committee and uh, make sure that they know we're needing those recommendations. And if they need any information, um, let us know now so we can get that to them ahead of time. Uh, we are looking at, and at the end of the month, moving forward with demolishing the bathrooms on Hamlet. So at the end of the September, we'll be moving forward to demolish those and advertising for the design build. I think I have a schedule in here. So September 6th, next week, we're hoping to have the bid packet for the design build released and September 23rd, demol demolish the current bathrooms. Uh, we can put Porter Johns there if there is an event that needs them in the interim. Uh, October 4th, we would receive the bids. October 8th, we would award the contract. And November, they would mobilize. This would be a fast project. We have 26 weeks between mobilization <coughs> and, and April 30th when we need the project complete. And that would be a part of the contract. And as how design builds work is, is you you put uh, stipulate a specific timeline, and we believe 26 weeks after talking to three contractors will work. Uh, I went through some requests for information. The first was marine security. Are we moving forward with cameras on the? east and south side and we did put cameras on the west side after the completion of the bulkhead um, that we were planning to do the same on the east and south side as a finishing of that project is is adding cameras at that time uh, Henniker's ditch we've had many conversations about that uh, when is that work actually starting so it's planned to start actually tomorrow uh, water testing on lease property. Um, we are pushing daily to get this done, and Mark's in here, so I know we're. Um, we, uh, I, I talk to Bill and Mark almost daily, or or do day, talk to them daily um, when available, and um, I should have a, a date for that. Hopefully, in the next day or so. I don't have an exact date yet, but that's coming. Snow's Cut Bike Trail, I thought that was a good question. We actually talked about that. Um, I talked to Eric about that uh, a couple of weeks ago. It's, it, it's kind of hit or miss on the um, paving that trail. We would have to walk it with Army Corps, that um, John Manning, who manage, helps us manage that property. Um, some, there's some value, and people like the rustic gravel appearance of the trail, and some people would like to see it paved something that if we wanted to move forward, the bike pad or Parks and Rec Committee could weigh in on, on those um, the positives and negatives there. Ed, if I can make a quick comment there, Absolutely. and I know Jerry probably followed up on this. We talked about it at the bike pad committee. Um, it's a very narrow that it, where it's been cut. I mean, probably about like that. I mean, could we get that a little wider, cut through there? If we're going to cut the grass, cut it down to keep snakes and that kind of thing out of it when people are walking down there? I believe we... Hey, I see you in the back, Brian. I see. Yeah. A, a lot of people have, have felt like it was too overgrown through there and was not properly cut. 
we did meet with our landscaper. I'm hoping that's resolved. If not, we can go walk it. Thanks. Uh, Four-way stock stops along full stretch of North Carolina. We heard that multiple times. That is moving forward through our TRC. Um, that when a traffic engineer looks at that, they're going to look at traffic counts, and it's not going to justify the four-way stops. That does not mean you can't do it. Uh, we will look at that from a safety standpoint. Are there um, safety impacts of putting that four-way stop there? Is it going to impact our first responders? Um, is it going to cause a concern? So we'll come back with a recommendation to you all. Could you, could you cover the entire Wilmington Beach area? Because it, it's like what, well, there are. If I single out one street in the Wilmington Beach take area, take a look at the entire area. Make some changes. We did. They're everywhere. We did a plan a few years ago yeah. for Wilmington Beach, and um, it is it has been implemented. I don't think you want them everywhere. Um, they typically, are everywhere except on North Carolina. There's I mean, four places. Everywhere. Four intersections on North Carolina so, that don't that, have. That, but that's it. hey, Ed, we'll come back to that. Sticking on the on tight timeline. Ten o'clock. Uh, All right. We'll come back, pick this up, do non-agenda after we return from closed session. So with sure. that, I make a motion to return from recess to go into a closed session to discuss an attorney-client matter in accordance with North Carolina General Statute 143-318. Thought 11A3, the matters being discussed include Town of Carolina Beach versus Carolina Freeman LLC, New Hanover County, 18 CBS 3151, Town of Carolina Beach versus BNF Enterprises LLC, New Hanover County, 18 CBS 3152, Town of Carolina Beach versus DRDK LLC, New Hanover County, 18 CBS 3153, Town of Carolina Beach versus Freeman Park LLC 18 CBS 3154. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And, and I have one. Right back out here to finish this? Yes, Steve. Yeah. And I got one more motion. Motion to go into closed session. To This is the second one, Kim. What I would suggest the second one, the one that's actually on the agenda, is going to be, I think, somewhat lengthy. Um, so you may want to wrap up the portion yeah come back out okay. complete your meeting and at the end Goodbye, it's just guys. a suggestion i'm here either way okay, okay. we're Sounds in good. we are moving to closed session thanks session with no action taken all those in favor aye aye, aye. aye. motion passed all right there we go all right ed thank you no agenda items none here yeah we can email your non-agenda items council yeah if you have any rfis so. whatever you call them Okay, going back to the uh, request for information, uh, we do have the list of requests to DOT, and I can get you some uh, specifics on what those look like, aerials, and, and specifics on where those are proposed. But it's basically collapsible, collapsible bollards at, in the center of the crosswalks back-to-back -back signage on crosswalk signs, Ocean Boulevard, high visibility crosswalks, reduction of speed limit on Dow, Lake Park, and Ocean. So those are the requests in, and we do have some mapping. If you'd like to see that, again, we can show that. And, and given the time they were submitted, do we expect now, today, about four to five weeks on the responses? I know it's – you're chasing a – yeah, got it. Town Marina, we did meet with FEMA at the marina yesterday. And this, they wanted another inspection, which was a, a very unexpected by us. Um, we had the, our engineer, the building inspector, and myself attended. Uh, we were not told the results of that reinspection. I'm hoping to meet with them again in the next week or so. We do still have the, our town engineer on your workshop for September to go through our plan for um, our timeline and plan for um, the east and south side but we're waiting for we've been waiting for FEMA to say yes move forward um, the reinspection was not necessarily a good thing but hopefully not a bad thing we'll, we'll just wait and see um, Carolina Beach Lake Dredge Matsu uh, project manager and waste work treatment plan our staff are working to get that moving as quickly as possible. We are finalizing a contract to to get the lake dredge material or lake dredge project back on track, 
and as I mentioned earlier, trying to get the testing done as quickly as possible. Uh, land use plan, most of you did attend uh, the meeting that we just had. Um, we are having another meeting on September 3rd at 6 p.m. to go through the changes and hopefully um, at that point we'll be ready to move the plan forward to the planning department or planning and zoning uh, board and then back to you at council. So we have, do have a few more public meetings on that before it's finalized. The, uh, the last bullet on here is encroachment. We've had multiple issues with encroachments in our downtown. Uh, as recent as last night or yes, over the weekend, we've had issues with contractors that are encroaching on public property or public right of ways. Uh, we've had two or three projects. We've had the rides that came in and had some encroachments. And those issues need to be addressed. We're, look, we're going, in the past, we've had informal agreements. Uh, some of those have not been, uh, have not gone well and, um, or, or ignored. Uh, so we need to formalize that process. So we are looking to have a formal encroachment agreement and put something in our code on, on here's the violation if you don't meet that encroachment agreement or if you're encroaching on town property, Cape Fear Boulevard, um, and you, you don't have permission, there should be a citation. Isn't there the time to do that, Ed, when we're issuing a permit with a contractor? Do we have a pre-con meeting on some of these projects where we, we sit down and tell We them? did on this one, that, and we had a plan, and they just didn't follow it. So and it was yeah, very... We have nothing in our ordinance that allows us to come back with any kind of um, fine or... We uh, could. They, mean, they did come um, and they were um, putting vehicles on public property and they did, they did damage um, public property by removing our sidewalk. So I'm sure there's some actions we could take against them. Well, it's not so you should take. It, my, my point is I've got a number of calls from businesses down at the boardwalk in the past two weeks for guys using the, the concrete pad in front of the gazebo as... It's one thing if they're going to drop off materials. Fine. Stay. Pull the ball, you drop off your materials and go park. But Mr. Kofer was kind enough to work out a staging agreement with us where he, in exchange for improvements to the FEMA lot, we allowed him to stage on a, a lot. So he worked something out. Other, other things are happening down there that people are just parking six, seven vehicles all day long for their subs. I appreciate that, but you can't do that. Right. And I want to know what we're doing to, number one, enforce that. And if they're not following the rules, it's like anywhere else. I mean, at some point you give them a notice, the second time you give them a fine. I uh, think we're, we're definitely at that now where they're going to start getting citations if they're down there, and we want to formalize that encroachment process. I'm sorry this happened. This is um, well, it's just, very it's, frustrating it's, for it, me. It, and it, I know we're in the middle of you. the final throws of the summer season. It's been a right. you know, and anyway. The biggest thing is it shows our visitors that they can pretty much park with it. Like, well, I tell you what, the inference comes back. Staff doesn't care. Right. Staff doesn't care about the boardwalk. That's that's the inference I'm getting back from specific business owners down there that, hey, obviously town hall doesn't care. It's not um, the police department doesn't care because that's not their issue. It's that Staff. you and your people do not care. And I tell them I don't think that's the case. There's only so many hours in the day we're trying to enforce it. But right. I'm, I'm trying to head that off. Thank so, you. All right. Thank you. So we'll, we'll work on that moving forward. Um, I think this is my last slide, but uh, state signs are being installed. I think this one actually went up yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, just want to make you aware that the state is putting these up uh, in not just on the other side of the bridge is where this one's <laughs> going, but in, in the area in general. So you'll see these going up around town. <laughs> Thanks, Ed. And I think that's it. I had some Freeman oh, Park. Wait till after the season to put those up. Just, you know. <laughs> uh, I think oh, it went good. up already. Like okay, this. that's all I have. Any questions for Ed? Comments? No, other than I just wanted to draw a quick attention to that uh, Freeman Park. You had those revenues that Debbie I asked you <laughs> to put together. I'd ask you guys to look at those. Um, it's not as dire as it looked. However, um, it's not it does good. show that... Um, Potentially, if we're, in my opinion, if we're going to limit the number of people out there, which is a great idea, um, we might do it on a daily pass basis versus the annual passes. If you look at the revenue streams. So anyway, 
Ed, and thanks for laying out those things that, that constitute getting the Lake Dredge project done. Uh, Joe Dan did a great summation. I, you know, I kind of came in on the backside with the staffing that's required. It's a whole lot more than the town just doing it. We got a lot of agencies yes, we have to work with. Absolutely. Our friends across the river are favorable. They support our desire to dredge the lake. However, they're not the final adjudicating authority. So we're going to pursue this, get it done, and, you know, all necessary steps, you know. So um, we will continue to push to get those permits and everything back in place and um, get get our um, get that project moving. So. Okay, great. Any other saved rounds for Ed? Okay. With that, I make a motion to go into closed session to discuss an attorney-client and real estate matter in accordance with North Carolina General Statute 143-38. And personnel. It's not on my. Uh, okay. Yeah, it is. All right, motion to go into closed session to discuss an attorney client personnel and real estate matter in accordance with North Carolina General Statute 143 318. 11 A3 and 5. All those in favor? Uh, and 6. And the property being discussed is located at 601 Carolina Sands Drive. Property being discussed is. It's on page 6 of the agenda. I don't have page 6. As referenced by the uh, motion to go into closed session to discuss an attorney, client, real estate, and personnel matter in accordance with North Carolina General Statute 143-318.11A3, 5, and 6. Property being discussed is located at 601 Carolina Sands Drive. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.